This is Irv Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel, and today we're going to do something very interesting. We're going to make a case for an iPhone, specifically for my iPhone 10, but not just any case, a case fully customized with the Dr. Vax logo. And I'm going to teach you how to do this on your own. You know, it's fun to download things from Thingiverse and print them, resize them, print them in different colors, give them as gifts, use them around your home. You need a custom size hook, so you download a model, you stretch it a little bit in your slicer. That's great. But the real power of 3D printing for home and business is the ability to customize objects on demand quickly and easily. We're going to use three programs to do this. We're going to use Thingiverse to find a model, Tinkercad to modify the model, and Gravit, a online editing program, graphic editing program, in order to make our logo suitable for Tinkercad. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. To begin with, we're going to go into Thingiverse and download a standard iPhone X case that we can use as the basis of our customization. Modeling in a CAD program, an iPhone with the rounded edges, just the right overlap lip, all of these details, that's pretty tricky. However, customizing an existing case is something you can do easily in a program that's taught to third graders called Tinkercad. So let's first find a case. So I'm going to go into Thingiverse. I'm going to search in Thingiverse for an iPhone. Let's spell that correctly. iPhone X case. And you'll see right here on the right is a case from Adafruit. Now, I'm a big fan of Adafruit. They make a variety of electronic components that open up the world of electronics to makers, to people at homes, people in small businesses. And in fact, in the future, there are going to be some videos on building things with Adafruit components where you combine electronics and 3D printing right here on this channel. So I'm going to download their case. And specifically, I want the one you see here in the middle, which is sort of a bump around the outside and then a minimal back. We're going to use that. So let's go to Thing Files and let's download the iPhone X Bump Flex case. Now that it's downloaded, I'm going to open that in Tinkercad. Yes, you can open STL files in Tinkercad. You don't have to start from scratch. So let's go to Tinkercad. I'm already logged in and we're going to create a new design. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import that file that I downloaded and I have a copy of it here stashed away in an easy to find location. And click on open, import, and we'll see here we now have our case. And we can rotate that around and look at it from different angles. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to remove this bar in the middle. So let me go to the top view and I'm going to drag a box that's a hole. For those of you new to Tinkercad, things, objects can be either solid or holes. When you combine a solid with a hole, the hole cuts a shape in that solid. So I'm going to take a hole here and I'm going to switch to what's called flat view by clicking on that. I'm going to make it so it just covers that center area. Let's make it a little bigger here. And now let me zoom in a little bit so I can get this just right. And we're going to drag this up to the edge here and drag it up to the edge here. Now, if you have trouble getting it right, it might be because your grid in Tinkercad is set too coarsely. So we're going to switch our grid to 0.1 millimeters. And now we can very precisely align this here to cut out that center section because we're not going to need it. So let's go back to a standard view and let's rotate this just a little bit. And we want to 
push this down a little so that it's going to cut through our object. Now let's click on Home, go back to a regular view. We're going to select everything here, make it a little bigger so you can see it, and I'm going to click on Group. So I've already done my first customization. I cut out that center area. Now what do I want to do next? Well now I want to add the Dr. Vax logo. Well I don't want to draw that from scratch. I have it on my disk, so I'm just going to go ahead and import it. So Tinkercad can import SVG files. My logo is in SVG format, so I'm going to click on Open, Import, and you'll see down here in the corner is an error. Well, Tinkercad does support SVG, but they have to be more or less simplified in a standard format. It doesn't support the most complex SVGs. I used a third-party artist to design this logo for me, so it might be quite complex, but I'll give you a trick. If you use the online program Gravit, you open up your SVG and you resave it, the Gravit format will simplify it sufficiently for Tinkercad. So let's go to Gravit Designer. I'm going to open from my local computer. I'm going to open that same logo. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the whole object by dragging a box around it. And I'm going to click on this little guy here to keep the ratio. I'm going to make it a little smaller so that when I import it, it's a little easier to import. Now I'm going to make my outline around it smaller, the page, and we'll make that 300 by 300. Then I'm going to select it again, more or less drag it to the center, just to make it a little easier to deal with when I import it. Now I'm going to go to File, Export, Scalable, SVG, and that just put it in my download folder. So let's go back to Tinkercad, and now I'm going to try importing it again. This time, I'm going to choose a file. I'm going to choose it from my download folder. That's the one I simplified. I'm going to say import, and let's wait and see what happens. And it came in perfectly. So I can select it, and now I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So it will more or less fit in the center area. Oops. How about like that? Let's look at it from the top. And I want to make sure that these corners here touch the side rails because I'm going to need it to be attached. Otherwise, if the logo is just floating, it'll fall out when I print it. Now, what about these letters up here? Well, for those, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to create a little bar. Let's go here and make it, oh, just about that tall. We'll go over here so we have a little space. I'm going to select this object and move it all over a little bit so that I have a little more space to work here. So we'll go here and I'll make it a little wider. And then I'm going to take this guy and drag it so it overlaps with the top bar of my objects. Just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to hit Control man D or Control D. And I'm going to use that to connect these together. I have to make sure it's touching all of the letters. So I'm going to adjust the dimensions so that I'm sure it's touching everything to make sure that we're going to have a nice solid bar there. So that's 26.52. We'll make that 26. I'll change this one to 26. Control D. I'll duplicate that. Let's drag it down here. Now, I want this, these new objects that I created 
to be the same height as the um, existing model. So you can see how they're higher and they're a little wider here. So we need to make sure they all get aligned properly. I'm going to select all of these by doing a shift select and I'm going to make them one millimeter high. And I'm going to do the same thing for the letters. We're going to make that one millimeter high. And now I have the height about right, but I don't quite have the width right. So let's take and select those and pull it in so it overlaps with that lip there, but it's not too much. There we go. Okay, now I can zoom out. I can select everything here. I can group it. And now we have a phone case and we can rotate this around a little bit. Look at it from the top. And I probably want to pull that one bar down. So let's ungroup it a little bit. Select that one. There we go. That looks a little better. Now let's zoom out. Select everything. Group it. Ah, it's a little bit low, but um, you get the idea. So once we've grouped it all together, and we've verified by looking at it from different views that it looks correct, here we go, and we can see it from the back, we are ready to print it. But there's a mistake here. Can anybody see what the mistake is? When you look at this, you want the lettering to be readable. Right now, because it's on the back, the lettering will be upside down. So I'm going to take and select that again, ungroup it one more time. This time select the letters, and I'm going to select flip and flip it horizontally. Now I'm going to group it, and we're ready to go. Now all I need to do is click on export, export it as an STL, and print it. Now it printed this in TPU, Insane Smart TPU. I really like Sane Smart TPU. This is a beautiful green color. You want to print it slow, hot, and with full fill. So you want the infill to be 100%. I printed this at 235 degrees Celsius, which is a little hot. I slowed down my printer a little bit. And if you do those things, you'll get a better print. This particular one, I did not switch the infill to 100%, and it's a little too soft. So at 100%, it should be just right. Well, folks, we learned about downloading an object from Thingiverse, about modifying it with Tinkercad, about using Gravit to update a SVG file so that Tinkercad would import it properly, and then some parameters about printing it in TPU. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope this was helpful to you. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Share this video everywhere you can think of. Share it to your Facebook friends. Share it on Twitter. And thank you so much for watching. Let's continue to learn things together.